We know them from games such as Call of Duty, Battlefield or others. Claymores and similar anti-personal mines seem to be quite effective gadgets in competitive shooters. So the idea to use them in Airsoft seems to be quite promising, right? For this video I tested three different BB mines to tell you now why you should not waste your money on any of them. Let's get started. What you see here is my personal collection of BB mines I bought during the last 12 months. As you can tell from the video title, none of them has even nearly satisfied my personal demands as an airsoft player. The two Claymore style gadgets come from AliExpress. One is remote controlled and the other one is triggered by an infrared sensor. The one in the center is called the Blaster Pro by Precision Mechanics. All of them have, in my opinion, huge problems in terms of quality and reliability, which is what I would like to demonstrate here. Let's check the remote control play more first. The initial impression on this little toy seems to be quite cool. It looks just like a real M18A1 Claymore and comes with a sturdy detonator. Let's say it looks promising at least. An impression that vanishes quickly when you take a closer look. The material chosen for the body is simple cheap ABS. It feels like it will fall apart if it gets hit by a BB or something. Especially the locking mechanism on the top appears to be very fragile. Besides the remote, the claymore can be triggered by a small lever on the top where a drip wire can be attached. This simple mechanism works just okay to be fair, but I never saw one single airsoft player in over 8 years of playing setting up a drip wire in an airsoft game. Probably you won't either if you decide to buy this product, so let's focus on the more interesting features. This is how it looks like when the claymore is closed. The huge gap between the two shell parts is large enough to fit a BB. In my eyes, this shows the low quality of the product quite obviously. It is of course a matter of the flexible and cheap plastic material, which shall not bother me if the Claymore would at least work as it was advertised. Let me tell you, it does not. One improvement they did indeed can be found on the Claymore's legs. They are metal made and a lot more solid than on previous versions, on which they consisted of the same plastic material as the body. I show you one of my older claymores, which is long sold by now as a reference. So let's come to the interesting part. When pressing the remote detonator, this is what should happen. But as you can see, my claymore obviously was defective already when being shipped out. I try to figure out what is the issue and think it is something on the detonator itself. Another indicator for very poor quality control. One more weak spot of this claymore is the fabric surface on which the BBs find their place. It does not protect them from falling down and spreading in the entire body, which is why adding some additional foam is a common mod on those mines. It prevents a loss of BB spread and makes the mine sound less like a baby rattle. But it would be cool if this solution would come out of the factory already. As I've been not very impressed by the remote controlled Claymore, maybe the infrared model can convince me better. The only difference to the Claymore shown before are the two dark sensors on the top and the lack of the remote detonator of course. Again, the idea behind the trap sounds very interesting. You turn the mine on by the switch on the inside, check the status LED if everything is operational and then press the reposition button. Afterwards, you have about 8 seconds before the claymore will set off when it detects any movements in front of it. Of course, things turn out less satisfying in the actual using situation of the claymore. First weak spot, the main power switch. In my case, it does not notice when being turned on. Or it turns off randomly, on slight vibrations for example. Imagine a situation in-game, when you finally found a good position for a trap and you want to place your claymore just to see that it has shut off and can't be turned on again unless you open it. Preparing the infrared claymore works just as on the remote one. 
It is not very difficult and can be done with a regular speed loader or even with a simple bottle of BBs. But the problem with the fabric surface and the BBs falling down also is the same here. Let's see how the infrared sensor detects my movement and if the claymore actually can hit me when passing by. Okay, I admit this was kind of unfair because I made a step back right in front of me. Let's give it a second chance. But again, the claymore spreads the BBs way too early. May it be because of the moving grass due to the wind or due to a sensor area which is too large. It definitely is too sensitive for my demands. Defined by more functionalities and a different form factor compared to the claymores, the Blaster Pro by Precision Mechanics is the third mine I tested the last year. I bought this one brand new in early 2023 but never got it working as it should, the way you can rely on it. As you see, I built some kind of housing for it to protect the LiPo battery which is needed for proper operation. The basic idea is similar to the infrared claymore. Once the battery is attached, you have a certain amount of time, which is way longer than on the claymore, before the BBs get spit out by the internal two wheels. A short demonstration shows that, in principle, this blaster also can work. But when you want to actually use it, a lot of downsides become obvious, which make you avoid it to take the gadget even with you on your next game day. The first downside is the sensitivity again. The motion sensor triggers the mechanism too early in outdoor scenarios like this one with sunshine and wind. When there is less light, it works a little better, as the second clip from a foggy day shows. But this is where the second downside kicks in. Feeding of this unit is terrible. It has to be set up in the perfect angle, so the BBs get enough grip by the internal wheels. The rate of empty deployments in my testing was about 50%, which is way too much for me to rely on in-game. The third and final issue I had with the Blaster Pro is the Bluetooth connectivity. The Pro version comes with an extra app, which shall enable you to trigger the unit on demand, deactivate it and do other funny things. While the function has worked the last time I tested it, today there is no connectivity at all and the app collapsed every single time I tried. Maybe I'm just too stupid or something, but for me it is enough to never touch this thing again. Which applies to all of the three gadgets you saw here actually. I hope everyone who sees this gets the win and decides not to buy a mine for airsoft. I understand the thrill about it, I bought them four times by myself, but in my eyes the bad reputation those mines have in Airsoft is very well justified. Still, I hope you like this video. Maybe see you on the next one. So long, have a good one.